Avast you mateys, this be Everyday Commentary. And this is a video overview of this knife. And the reason I'm talking like this is because I've been like Captain Ahab after the white whale for this knife. Hi everybody, this is Everyday Commentary and this is a video overview of this knife. And this knife is, I think it's the C38, uh, which is the Spider Co. designation for the uh, Jess Horn Lightweight. The Just Horn Lightweight was a, a knife that was made in the uh, early 21st century, early 2000s, and it was built in a bunch of different formats. Um, some of them had micarta handle scales, which are really nice. Um, some of them were bigger than this, some of them were smaller than this. And uh, they all ran, uh, there were a bunch of different blade steels. There's an OS8 version, I think there is an ATS 34 version, but this one, this is the knife probably that I have wanted the longest, and thanks to a reader named Ethan, I was able to get it. He was kind enough to buy it for me, and then I sent him the money, and he sent me the knife. So I put this on my 2015 Most Wanted list, and it had been there since 2013 uh, when I first started doing the Most Wanted list. So I'm really happy that I finally got this knife, and um, having carried it for about a week, I can tell you that this knife is freaking amazing. So I'm going to go through this knife quickly and then I'm going to show you a comparison to the Spartaco uh, Dragonfly 2 in ZDP-199 and we'll talk a little bit about why I like this knife and why I like that knife so much. So first of all, this knife as you can see is a lockback and this is one of the last knives made in a lockback configuration from Spartaco without the Dave Boy dent, which is a little cut out here and I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like this. So, this does not have the Dave Boyd dent. I don't know if it's something that's necessary. Um, the theory is that if you opened this knife and you were really squeezing hard, you might be able to disengage the lock. I've never had that happen, and on a knife of this design, I don't think it will ever happen, so I'm not so worried about that. Um, so, it's a lock back, and as you can see, it is a very smooth lock back. And a lot of this has to do with the fit and finish. Uh, of the knife, how good the tolerances are on the lock bar, and it also has to do with how well polished this back piece is. You can get this thing really, 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 really well polished, and the uh, the part that actually contacts it on the, the lock bar side, really well polished. And you can get an incredibly smooth knife. It'll never be as smooth as a liner lock or a frame lock because the, the area of contact with the between the blade and the lock is much greater, so there's obviously going to be greater friction, but you can get it pretty smooth. This knife is not quite flickable, but it's pretty close, and um, I'm impressed with how nice the lock back is. It's not, I mean, you can still see the line. Uh, on my Almar Ultralight that I used to have, you would not be able to see the line. It would come and meet and it would just vanish. So not quite that nice, but pretty darn close. This knife was produced as a sprint run in 2006. And it's a sprint run because it comes in this burgundy micarta handle. And you can see, let's see if I can get it to zoom in here. Come on. There you go. Jess Horn, Jess Horn, Jess Horn, Jess Horn, all over the place. Um, Jess Horn is a, I think he is a South African knife designer, I'm not 100% sure about that. But he made this knife and another knife for Spyderco, which is one of the very few Spydercos that doesn't have a thumb hole. It has sort of like a trapezoidal groove, kind of like a Nandi. And uh, that's probably the most expensive Spyderco ever made. On the secondary market, you can, if you find them for 500 bucks or less, you should just buy one because they're incredibly hard to find and they're always going up in price. But this is his other model and I actually like this model a little bit better. So it runs the burgundy uh, color for the sprint run and this is an FRN handle. One of the things that makes this light so incredibly light is no liners. And the other thing that's interesting is that I've had a lot of FRN handles and this one is really solid. I mean we're not getting any movement here at all. Um, it runs a standard, but not spoon style clip. This is probably before the spoon style clip had taken over. Um, and this little uh, sort of raised lip here makes the the clip really lock in. It's quite good. Um, there's a nice generous sized lanyard hole, and I'll note that it's not piped because, again, that would add weight. Um, there is, it's unfortunately pin style construction. There's a pin here, uh, and there's a pin here, and that's it. Um, the knife itself, the blade itself, is, and you can see if we can get it, there it is. There it is. That's the line. So on the outside, it's 420J, 
and it has a core of ZDP189. And this is the same setup that's used on the Kali 3 CF and I really, really like it. Notice a couple things about the blade. First of all, it has this very prominent swedge. Second of all, it's quite long. Uh, this, this knife is uh, right around three and a quarter inches long, which is significantly longer than my preferred length. But the really crazy thing is, I'll show you in a second. Let's keep going on the blade. Right here, there is a true ricasso, something that you can use to sharpen the knife all the way to the edge. And this is relatively uncommon on Spydercos, and it's something that I wish they would do more often. Um, and it does make a difference. I, I found that you can get the knife sharper because you're not essentially stopping right here and making it very difficult to get that last little bit in. And oftentimes when you're cutting, you'll put the knife here and like pull the material and cut that way. And so there's a lot of wear, or at least the way I use it, there's a lot of wear right here. Maybe that's because when I first started carrying knives, I used partially serrated knives and that was always the sharpest part. And so I've just learned to use a knife, a folding knife that way. Um, as you can see, there's the designation for the steel. Um, ZDP 189 and 420J2. Uh, this is a Seki City production, so this is a Japanese knife. And it is a really finely made knife. As you can see, the swedge here gives the knife an incredibly precise point. I mean, this thing is insanely sharp. Insanely. It came out of the box just mind-bogglingly sharp. And, by the way, thanks to Ethan's quick eye, this is a perfectly new in-the-box model. It was new old stock. It had basically been sitting around at the knife store that he drove by for, I don't know, eight years and no one bought it. So... It was still in the wrapper. The wrapper was still sealed. It was just perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, there's two sort of cutouts here, real gentle. Your fingers kind of fall in them naturally. Um, the handle is a nice curved shape. And I think that the best way to look at this knife is to say that, you know, this is the perfect mix between an Almar knife, that's a very light, thin, narrow construction, and a Spyderco knife with the FRN handles, the thumb hole opener, and a pocket clip. And so if you're in the market for a knife of this size, and this is really a great, great, great EDC size, um, this is a knife you, that's definitely worth tracking down. And let's, let's bring in uh, two things. First, my digital scale. It's actually my wife's digital scale for baking. Point one, uh, 1.72 ounces. Okay, let's try this again. 1.72 ounces. 1.72 ounces. Now, 1.2 ounces. Okay, so the reason I brought the Dragonfly in, not only is because it has the same kind of steel, but also because <clears throat> this is a really interesting comparison. These two knives are within a half ounce of each other in terms of weight. And yet this knife has a significantly longer blade. Now I'm not bothered by a short blade, especially if you do cutting edge to cutting edge. I mean, it's there. It's it's a just giant difference, almost an inch difference. I'm not bothered by a small knife, but some people are. And if you're looking for a knife that's small, that's slim that's really light, then this is a great thing to try to track down. I really wish Spyderco would, would release a sprint run of this. Put some British Racing Green on here, put a, a wire pocket clip, because this is a great, great, great design. Um, and while I think I probably prefer the Dragonfly just because of its size, um, the Jess Horn Lightweight and ZDP 189 ain't no slouch. This is a damn good knife. Uh, I'll probably do a shorter review. I'm not going to do a full-length review. I'll probably do a quick hit review on this knife, but look for it coming soon. And thanks again, Ethan, for hooking me up with this awesome, awesome blade.